this episode of Velocity Labs, we are changing out the seats on Project Bugford. I've been doing a lot of tooling around town and commuting in the bug, and the first thing that I needed to change was the steering wheel because it was too big for me. But now there's another thing that needs to get changed for comfort and stability reasons, and that's the seats. These things are absolutely terrible. I'm in a car with 30 horsepower, a tired old suspension, and really skinny tires. And still going around corners makes me feel like I'm gonna slide right out of the seat. I can't even set anything on them. If I do, it just slides right off. So it's time to change the seats. Now, I was looking at some sporty seats like some Recaros or some Sparkos, but those are way out of my budget for this build right now. Then I looked at some of the eBay racing seats that they have on there, and they're only about 200 bucks and they look pretty cool, but I have some serious concerns about the quality of those seats, especially when it comes to safety. When it comes to cheap Chinese goods, safety is not something you want to skip out on. Things like fog lights, LEDs, stuff like that, go for it. If it breaks, no big loss. But if your seat breaks when you're in a collision, not good. So what's the answer? OEM replacement seats. I need something sporty, relatively skinny so it's going to fit in this cabin, and it's got to have good side bolstering to keep me in place. So we are headed to the junkyard. All right, after wandering around for a bit, here's what we found. It's a 2003 Hyundai Tiburon GT. The seats look sporty enough and they're in pretty good shape. I looked at a lot of cars for sporty looking smaller seats and I guess it's really not surprising that the import section seemed to have the best fit for the bug. Most seats were either big and cushy, powered, which isn't gonna work for me, or just simply too ugly. But these look like they'll fit perfect. Oh yeah, those will do nicely. A lot of side bolstering, holds you in nice. Black leather, they'll match anything. Looks pretty good. I think we will take these. This rear bench is really nice too. I wonder if I can make it fit in the bug. It'd be pretty hilarious. Here we go. Two connectors. We're out. And let's get the driver's seat out of here. Yep, these are just about perfect. And for $50 total for the pair, you really can't go wrong. Actually, make that $49.55 for the pair. All right, back in the garage. Now all we have to do is put these seats where the bug seats are sitting. All right, so obviously the first thing that we need to do to replace the seats is to take the old seats out. But before we do that and we put the new seats in, there's actually a couple reference measurements that I wanna take first. First thing that I wanna do is measure the seat height. All right, so distance from the floor to the front edge of the front seat is just under one foot. So it's just about exactly 12 inches. Um, also, I would just wanna get a good visual reference for the seating position. So you'll see that my legs kind of angle upwards and um, I actually have a ton of headroom in here, like pretty much a hand, which is got a good four and a half inches above my head. <laughs> anyway, I have a good four and a half inches above my head. Um, but I am going to be chopping the roof on this bug. So I am going to want the new seats to sit just a little bit lower. All right, so first thing you wanna do is slide the seat all the way forward. Just find a little lever. And slide it forward. Once we have the seat as far forward as it can go, there's a little tab hidden down here by the handbrake lever. We need to push down on that with a big screwdriver or a pry bar, lift up on the lower handle, and then slide the seat forward and it should come out. Well, let's give it a shot. So what I'm gonna do Sneak my leg behind it so I can push forward with my knee, push down on the lever with the pry bar, and then lift up on the lever, and I should be able to wiggle it out. Maybe. There. Woo! 
Finally got it. All right, and that is out. All right, so seats are out and we'll need to make some brackets. But before we do that, oh yeah, that looks awesome. <laughs> yes. All right, and just because I'm curious, let's see how much the weight difference is between these two seats. All right, so first up is the stock seats. These things are actually pretty light. All right, so stock seat is 32.65 pounds or 14.81 kilograms. All right, and now the seats out of the Hyundai Tiburon. Which are quite a bit heavier. So that gives us 48.05 pounds and 21 0.79 kilograms. It's an acrobatic seat. All right, so we definitely know those aren't exactly lightweight racing seats, but um, at least we know that they're structurally sound. They've at least passed a crash test or two. So next up, let's go ahead and start fabbing up some brackets for these things. All right, let's turn this bit of box section into seat brackets. The first thing we need to address is the factory sliders. The ends where the bolts go are bent slightly down in the factory Hyundai setup. We're gonna need to fix that. To make our homemade custom brackets work with these stock seat sliders, this tab is gonna need to be straight. And the easiest way to do that is just to bend it back. But we definitely don't wanna just Hulk smash this thing back straight. Whenever you're bending metal, you're actually adding more stress to it, which can weaken the metal or make it brittle. We can try our best to avoid that by adding heat before any of the bends are made. Adding heat should help reduce any strain hardening that can happen when you're bending steel. So what are we gonna do with this thing before we bend it? If you guessed kill it with fire, you are correct. So once we're looking like it's nice and hot or things are looking like they're gonna catch on fire, just grab a lever and start bending. Just uh, take it slow and add more heat if it's needed. There we go, nice and straight. All right, so now that I have these straightened out, I wanna take a little piece of box section here and I'm gonna cut it to exactly the same length as the factory sliders and I'm gonna need one on both sides. And you know what's crazy? This mark that I just made, I think is about dead center on this piece of box section. So this box section is 36 inches exactly, which means 18 inches is dead center. And the mark that I made is just a hair off dead center. So uh, we can just chop this thing down the middle. Call that fortuitous. Here we go, two 18 inch sections ready to go. All right, the length looks good. All we have to do now is just make a little hole for the guide pin and we'll be ready to go. And if you're noticing that it's not going to sit level once there's a hole for the guide pin, then you're already one step ahead of me. We'll need to drill a hole for this alignment pin though first. Just mark it out, punch the center and drill out the hole. Perfect. Except not perfect. The two bolt locations aren't parallel to each other, so the box section won't sit level. How do we fix that? More box section. Yeah, that should work. Drill another hole, line it up for a test fit, or line it up this way for a test fit. There we go. And perfect. Also, the bolt locations aren't parallel on either axis, so we'll need to skew the spacer out a little bit. Done. 
more holes, buy some bolts, do a couple more test fits, and then clamp it in place. Do the same thing for the other side, and voila! Instant seat brackets that work with the factory sliders. Except for this little issue. Since we've bent the bolt receiver's level, now they're interfering with the factory slider. Fix? Grinder. Done. Now all we have to do is get them in the bug. Step one, get rid of the plastic covers on the stock rails. Step two, grind away some paint so we can weld on it. And step three, head to your welding buddy's house to have him weld in some more box section. You guys remember Willie, right? He made me my kick-ass HX35 wastegate actuator. Anyway, here's what we're doing. The stock bug floor pans have some beefy rails welded on them already. So we're adding some box section to that to support our brackets. Then we're welding in the slider supports that we just made to complete the seat bracket. Then we simply bolt in the seats like a factory setup. And Willie even welded in some captive nuts to make installation a breeze. Oh yeah, that feels way better than it did before. Obviously we're sitting lower, but uh, the position that it's putting the driver in feels much more natural to me. Now, uh, how much more lower are we than the other seats? Uh, the stock seats were about 12 inches from the floor to the front lift, and uh, these ones are about 11 inches. So only an inch lower starting at the front, but the stock seats uh, went up to about 12 inches and then just kind of continued upward. Um, whereas these seats go up to about 11 inches at the start, but then they slope right back down again and just cradle the driver in place, which is nice. And then above our heads, we had about four and a half inches before. Now we have... Yeah, about seven and a half or eight inches. So obviously still plenty of room to chop the roof down when we get to that point. So um, let's go ahead and take this thing for a spin. Oh man, that is so much better. I can actually go around a corner now without sliding out of my seat. So what's next? This transmission has been grinding and it's not shifting very well. And I found a cheap used one on Craigslist. So we're gonna swap it out, take this thing to the drag strip and see what the quarter mile time is. Ah. Uh.